Uh, I like to think of myself as not so new. I've been doing it for about six months now. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing to you today Commissioner Edith Ramirez, who uh, came to us from Los Angeles about a year ago. Um, she joined the uh, Federal Trade Commission in April of uh, 2010. Uh, Commissioner Ramirez has an AB from Harvard University, a JD from Harvard Law School, so she spent a lot of time in Boston. Um, she clerked at the Ninth Circuit for uh, the Honorable Alfred T. Goodwin, and she comes to us from the LA law firm of uh, Quinn Emanuel, no relation to me, Urquhart and Sullivan, where she was a trial and an appellate litigator focused in the areas uh, of representing clients in complex business litigation issues. Um, without further ado, because we're, as, as the commissioner pointed out to me, we're between you folks and cocktail hour, so we're going to be very brief. Commissioner Ramirez. Thank you very much. Um, let me just say that I'm very delighted to be here with all of you, and I would like to thank Epic and uh, the Future of Privacy Forum for inviting me to speak um, today. I understand that today's program has touched on a wide range of privacy issues from do not track to cybersecurity to the contrast between European and American approaches to privacy. And what I'd like to do to close the day is to focus on privacy in the mobile environment, which is a key part of the Federal Trade Commission's privacy agenda. The theme of the conference is the future is now, and nothing embodies that more than mobile technology. As others have remarked, the future of mobile is the future of everything. But as a student of history, I think it's useful to view the present and the future through the lens of the past. History teaches that significant technological advances bring both tremendous benefits to consumers while often creating new privacy threats. In 1890, Louis Brandeis and Samuel Warren published their influential law review article, The Right to Privacy. Warren and Brandeis feared that new mechanical devices would invade the sacred precincts of private and domestic life. The new technology that caused this alarm was the snap camera, which Eastman <coughs> Kodak introduced in the 1880s with the slogan, you press the button, we do the rest. Although photography had been around for many years, this cheaper and lighter camera enabled instant and candid photos of people in their everyday lives. This technological advance coincided with the rise of a tabloid press, which now had the means to print personal and potentially embarrassing photos of anyone. Warren, Brandeis, and many others were alarmed by the privacy ramifications of these developments. They cautioned that these new devices threatened to make good the prediction that what is whispered in the closet shall be proclaimed from the housetops. And little did they know how such concerns would manifest themselves in the 21st century. While the new consumer technology of the late 1800s was the Kodak snap camera, today our digital lives are being transformed by mobile technology. As of this February, nearly 70 million people in the US own smartphones. This is a 13% increase in smartphone ownership as compared to the prior three months. Today's smartphones are so powerful and sophisticated that their owners could not have imagined them just a few years ago. And smartphone users can choose from hundreds of thousands of applications that offer astonishing functionality, from the mundane and frivolous, like the much-loved Angry Birds, to the life-saving, such as apps to donate to victims of natural disasters. But what are the features of today's smartphones and tablets that make them a new technology with new privacy concerns? After all, there's been widespread access to the internet via the desktop computer for nearly two decades. And a number of the privacy concerns raised about mobile have been voiced about the general online environment for many years. So again, back to the Kodak snap camera. It wasn't the first camera sold in the US, but it was cheaper and more widely available than prior cameras. And it was portable, mobile, in a way that earlier cameras were not. From a privacy perspective, those features made all the difference. And today's mobile devices have several defining features that also make a world of difference. First, mobile devices are highly personal, always with you and always on. While desktop computers are often shared by multiple users, mobile phones are almost always used by only one person. And consumers take them nearly everywhere they go. Think of your own behavior. 
When was the last time you went out without your smartphone? For most people, that's as rare as leaving home without a wallet or a purse. How often do you turn off your smartphone? For most of us, I imagine the answer is almost never. Not even when we sleep. In fact, two thirds of American adults have slept with their phone at their bedside. Then there's location. As with real estate, the three most important things about mobile are location, location, location. To an unprecedented degree, these devices collect information about consumers' precise whereabouts. When you factor in that smartphones are always with us and always on, the result can be a nearly complete record of where we spend our every moment. This record can reveal sensitive information, such as visits to a hospital or a doctor's office, church, school, or a political meeting. Third, in many cases, mobile apps can collect a wide variety of information, some of it quite revealing about users beyond their location. The Wall Street Journal has reported that many companies across, that many companies access a broad range of information, including the user's contact, contacts, phone number, gender, age, and what other apps have been installed. If software on your desktop computer did that, it might be called spyware. And fourth, Mobile devices and their apps are especially popular with kids and teens, and many are designed for children. Kids today learn how to play a game on a smartphone before they learn how to read, and they are often given their own mobile device, increasingly a smartphone, long before they receive their own PC. Whenever minors are involved, privacy concerns are at their peak. It's chilling to think what could, what could happen if, for instance, information gleaned from a mobile device or application about a child's daily schedule and whereabouts got into the wrong hands. Mobile devices can also be a payment mechanism in a way that desktop computers will never be, and this too will raise unique privacy and data security issues. Mobile payments are in their embryonic stage, but as Google and others roll out pro programs to permit mobile phones to serve as a general payment mechanism, Many will come to see their phone, much as they now use their debit or credit card. Finally, there's mobile smaller screen. This lack of space makes reliable, makes reliance on written notices to address privacy issues particularly challenging. Industry has not yet risen to meet the unique privacy challenges presented by mobile technology. Technological innovation has far outpaced privacy protection, and as a result, we now have a deepening privacy deficit. Mobile data privacy has been called the Wild West, and regrettably, th this description is all too apt. Everyone understands that a navigation app or an app that provides restaurant recommendations or local coupons needs geographic information. But gaming apps and others frequently collect location data for no clear reason. This is especially alarming when apps are directed at children. Consumers today are given limited choice and notice before information about their location is shared. We do see some notice and choice today before location information is shared with apps, but what happens next? Apps are not providing effective notice and choice before passing on location data to other companies. Many consumers would also be surprised and disturbed to learn that apps are collecting and sharing other personal information about them, including a unique ID assigned to their phone. Ad networks receiving this information from multiple apps can create detailed profiles of consumers that can be shared with a variety of online and offline companies, potentially including employers, schools, and insurance companies. Against this backdrop of questionable privacy practices, many consumers report serious concerns about their privacy when using a mobile phone. According to an online survey of 1,000 consumers conducted by Trustee and Harris Interactive earlier this year, privacy is consumers' top concern when using mobile applications. So what can be done? Companies acknowledge that consumer privacy and trust are vitally important to the long-term growth of mobile, and that more needs to be done to educate consumers about mobile privacy practices. But their actions suggest they often lose sight of these truths and that needs to change. Congress has expressed great interest in privacy issues, particularly with respect to mobile, and there's a variety of pending or expected bills on do not track, baseline privacy standards, children's privacy, and data security. In this climate, it behooves individual companies and trade associations 
to work proactively to protect consumer privacy. To that end, I urge companies to implement the recommendations in the preliminary report on privacy issued by FTC staff last December.